We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. And contrary to what the comment section seems to think, we do actually make a living doing this, which is pretty darn cool, but comes with its own unique set of challenges and stressors especially in 2024. The bike industry is having a hard time. Today, we're going to pull back the curtain a bit on how we make this lifestyle and this YouTube channel work and discuss how the current state of the bike industry is affecting us. We lost our two highest paying sponsors. We have some big changes coming for 2024, but whatever happens, we look forward to sharing it with all of you. Thanks for being part of this journey. It is 2024 and you have probably seen many videos on YouTube in the past couple of months about how the bike industry is going to crash and burn in 2024. <laughs> no one has pulled the punches with the dramatics. Right now is not a great time to be working in the bike industry, whether you are a sponsored athlete or you work for a bike company or a bike shop. I don't think the predictions are quite as dire as some people are making it out to be, but we wanted to kind of take a minute and discuss what this has been like sort of from our perspective as sponsored athletes. First of all, it is true. The bike industry is having a hard time. Pandemic happened and a lot of new people got into mountain biking or got back into mountain biking and they bought a lot of bikes and they bought a lot of gear and that was really good for the industry. So that was really cool. And the industry was like, yes. This is going to continue forever. Yeah, like we're seeing a resurgence and then assumed that that was a sustainable trajectory and it just wasn't. And between the kind of financial difficulties nationwide and inflation rates and all that kind of stuff recently, like people are spending less. So the bike industry has a lot of inventory at the same time as demand is down. So what does that mean for everyday people? It means it's a great time to buy bikes. If yes. you are looking to get a bike, you probably noticed incredible sales over mm -hmm. the holiday season. A lot of companies trying to move a lot of inventory so that they can make room for new stuff. It's definitely been a harder time for the smaller companies out there. We've heard rumors about some of the big box brands having just warehouse upon warehouse of extra bikes which means they can discount those bikes quite a bit and their margins were already better than say a more boutique bicycle brand. Good time to be a consumer and to buy bicycles. Yeah. So Bad so time <laughs> to be in the industry. A lot of people are losing their jobs, which is really hard to hear. Uh, and a lot of marketing budgets are getting cut or reduced, which is what affects us. Right. <laughs> there are a lot of different models for sponsorship within the bike industry. At the higher echelons of racing, you have a lot of what people call factory teams. The companies are generally communicating with the manager of that team. So the athletes actually have very little relationship with the brands that they are working for. And then I would say the next level are individual sponsorships or sort of privateer programs, which is what we have always done which is to say we build our own program, we reach out to brands we want to work with, we have those individual relationships. We coordinate the contracts, we coordinate what events we're gonna like, we coordinate everything right. directly with the brands we're working with. And then there's sort of the influencer model where YouTubers or Instagram creators might get paid per post and we kind of do that as well. Hopefully that sort of background will help you guys understand a little bit what we're discussing. You've probably seen a lot of announcements about teams closing. A lot of teams, especially Enduro World Cup teams, close their doors this year. That is a really bad situation for the athletes on those teams because all of their sponsors are wrapped up in being on that team. So mm -hmm. we have a little bit of a level of protection from that because we are more diversified and yeah. we if we lose one sponsor that's just one sponsor as opposed to like losing our team contract and losing everything that being said we lost our two highest paying sponsors one was niner which was kind of your more traditional athlete sponsor relationship where they gave us a certain amount of money for the year and you know we use that to 
do our race season and it wasn't a per video payment. And then the other one was competitive cyclist and competitive cyclist was a, you know, sort of content based relationship it was a pretty significant portion of our sponsorship budget. And Oof. just some really big changes. We've mm-hmm. been working with Niner since 2020. We're super, super grateful to them and everything that we got to do with them. Really, really amazing brand and amazing people there. We came to regard a lot of the people that work there as close friends. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of fun and a lot of opportunities to hang out with other Niner sponsored athletes and, and make those relationships as well as them, you know, supporting us as racers and getting to do what we want to do. That relationship just sort of didn't make sense moving forward. Um, it was nothing against the bikes, nothing against the people there. We love Niner. We love what they do. It just was time for a change. Different companies are looking for different things at different points. They have different budget available. We have to pay our mortgage yeah. and pay for gas and pay for right. food. And this yeah. is what we, this is our profession. Essentially the same thing was true with competitive cyclist. Nothing against competitive cyclist. Really enjoyed working with them. We worked with them for the last four years. The first videos of ours they sponsored were BC bike race in 2019. It's a bummer to, to not be able to continue that relationship. But once again, it was, you know, simply a, a business decision and yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes. And just to be totally honest, sponsorship is kind of a tricky way to make a living, which is why back in 2018, we started this YouTube channel. And the goal with that originally was to not be as dependent on mm-hmm. that. While the past few months have been kind of stressful, figuring all this out, <laughs> <laughs> making some least. changes, we feel very lucky that we do have these personal relationships with sponsors. So just because we lost our title sponsor does not mean we have lost the entire program. Mm -hmm. We're still working with a lot of amazing companies going into 2024. And I think even more important than that, we have YouTube, we have Patreon. And Mm -hmm. so we are not getting our entire income from sponsorship, which is a very stressful way to make a living. And I I wanna be very clear. I'm sure there'll be someone in the comments being like, oh, boo hoo, you have it so bad. Like. We don't have a bad. We're not complaining. We're here. not complaining. Yeah. But imagine if you work a real job, real job, nine to five, if every year in October, everything about your job got renegotiated. I feel like for most jobs, there's kind of this understanding that like, unless something dramatic changes, you will continue to have the same job. For the bike industry, it's sort of like every year, you have to decide like you kind of start from yeah zero. you're like am i gonna have this job next year every year and that's that's kind of stressful yeah i feel like we bring a lot to the table as athletes and as content creators but at the end of the day like what's happening in the industry tends to make a huge and has over the years made a much bigger difference in the budgets that we've had than like what we were doing like yeah. we just had our best year like both athletically and with videos. And that did not make a difference at all. Like Sid said, we are more diversified and not only within sponsorship, because like we work with a bunch of different sponsors. So if you lose one, you know, it's a bummer, Mm -hmm. but there are others. But also in terms of our income sources or income streams, we have sponsorship as one part of it. We have YouTube AdSense, we have Patreon. we, We have a bunch of different ways that we can make money. And so while it was a blow to the budget, um, we should be able to still do what we are doing moving forward or what we've been doing moving forward. We still have some really crazy big plans for 2024 Mm -hmm. and we were definitely a little stressed about this for a while. I would say we are a lot less less stressed now. Um, Very grateful to everyone on Patreon. If you are wondering how you can support us, Patreon is a great option. We've also opened channel memberships here on YouTube if you prefer that over Patreon. And we're also going to be talking more about the ways that you can support us with affiliate links. We haven't done that much in the past. If you don't know what affiliate marketing is, it basically means you click a link in the description of this video or we send you a link or something like that and then we get a small kickback on those purchases. You can go to sidandmackie.com slash support us and have a list of like all of the affiliate links that we have. And so if you're thinking of purchasing something anyway. And you like our videos. And you like our videos and you wanna support us, if you click that link and then purchase it through that, 
that helps us. Also, it doesn't change the price for you. We feel like this is a good way to help support this channel because we get to talk about what we want to talk about. There's, we do still get a kickback if a purchase is made, but there's less of a kind of a quid pro quo. All that to say, we are fine. Yeah. It's been a little gonna be stressful, okay. <laughs> but life can be a little stressful. It's going to be okay. We have some awesome plans for 2024 that we are not sharing yet. We also will be continuing to work with the majority of our sponsors from last year. We'll still be working with Primal. They'll be doing our kits for us again. We also have something fun that we're doing with them. You guys will find out about. Working with Fox and Shimano, Expedo pedals, Velo saddles, Noble wheels, Bird spokes, Enduro bearings, Feedback Sports. And we are going to have a bike sponsor for 2024. It's a bit complicated at the moment. It'll probably be a couple months before everything is totally sorted out and we can announce. Just a small tease. I promise you this will all make sense when we announce it. And, and it's pretty exciting. It's really exciting. Really it's exciting. a company that's doing some really cool stuff and we're excited to get to be a part of that. It's definitely mm -hmm. gonna be different, mm -hmm. but I think that's kind of the, maybe the lesson for 2024 for us is that we're, we're trying different things, different kinds of partnerships, different ways to basically afford to do these cool things and make videos about them and share it with you. So once again, we wanna say a huge thank you to Niner for all the support over the last four years. We had an amazing time, amazing people, amazing bikes. It is time for us to step into kind of a new chapter, a new era. A new era. We also wanna say a huge thank you to everybody on Patreon and all of you for watching our videos.